Good day YouTubers. The base board came equipped with a Yamaha net as part of the engine installation. That brings all the engine information up to the smart gauges that Yamaha uses, but I find their mode switching and that a little bit hard to adjust to. And since Raymarine have an interface to the Yamaha net, which puts everything up on the big screen and makes it really easy to find things and adjust them, I decided I'd make the bridge between the Yamaha net and the Raymarine and have all my engine instruments on the Raymarine unit. Made sense to me and I love my gadgets, so here's how to do it. I've cut a block of wood and attached the backbone of the network onto it. I'm going to glue the block of wood up there and I'll use some tape to hold it there while the glue dries. The main reason for doing that is that I don't want to drill holes in the fiberglass. I just don't like holes in the fiberglass. It gives a point for moisture to get in there, which can seep along the fibres and cause delamination. Next job is to get that glued in. I've got the backbone of the network screwed onto this block of wood. The block of wood's gluing onto the fiberglass. I've just got a bit of duct tape here holding it. It's a good thick glue. I think that's all it's going to need and it'll glue there quite nicely. I'll be able to come back tomorrow and tear that tape off and start putting the network together. Yeah, I've just got the gear I need to connect the Yamaha up to the Raymarine Axiom. Let's have a quick look at what we've got here. That's the cable. The big end of it plugs into the Yamaha bus and the little end goes into the Raymarine bus. And this is all the gear we've got to make that work. I've already had it open. That's the power cable for the bus. It came without any ends on it, so I've already had it open and put those ends on it. Just crimped ends, but they're the proper marine ones with the heat shrink on them and the hot glue inside them so that they're all nicely sealed. And that plugs into your bus, into the backbone. Let's see what we got. That is a device net female adapter cable, which I'm guessing I possibly need for the Yamaha unit. We've got a couple of terminators here, which you need to make the bus work. The backbone has to be terminated. We've got a spur cable, which I don't think I have a use for at the moment, because I don't think I've got anything to connect to, unless I connect into the back of the Garmin and let it have a look at the data that's available on the uh, bus because there will be some other stuff going on it eventually and this is the backbone it's a five-way connector and that forms the backbone of the network as you can see the two end ones are for termination and we have three connections that we can use one of them will be the power we've got the other two leads and as i say one's going to the yamaha unit the other one i'm not sure about but we'll work something out when we come to do it and just so you know what part number you need, there it is there, E70242 for the Yamaha command link cable. I needed somewhere to put the other bits for the Yamaha Namiya 2000 network, which will eventually also be driving the autopilot. And obviously there's no room left down there. So I thought that the next best thing I could do, rather than try and make some room in here somewhere behind all this, which would only get in the way and just make the job awkward, I thought I'd just try putting this block of wood up here and mounting it upside down on that so that it's poking down this way. I think that'll clear the cover that goes over this and use up that space. The only other spot I could see was in there and that's where the control for the zip wakes are going to go when I get them on because I don't really see any other possibilities for them either except maybe on the other side through here just a bare possibility perhaps beside the steering wheel not going to be a good spot for them but up on the dash would be the better spot so anyway yes that's where that's going to go in the next couple of days I hope the rest of the gear I need to put the Yamaha net together to connect it to the Raymarine unit has arrived. Got the longer one metre cable and I've got the Raymarine engine control interface. Now, whether I needed that is debatable. It is a Namiya 2000 bus that the Yamaha sits on and really all I needed was a cable that has the connector that Yamaha uses on one end and the connector that Raymarine uses on the other. So anyway, it is what it is. I bought this to electrically isolate the two Namiya 2000 buses that I have in there. 
Whether I needed to or not, I'm not sure, but it is done now, as they're isolated, and it's probably the safer of the two options. So that's the way I decided to go. Let's go and get it installed. This is the Namiya cable, and as you can see, I've got enough sticking out there to go to the Raymarine unit. It's not in the race of getting over here to this bus here. So what I need to do is to move this bus here onto this pad here, so I can plug that up in there. Got the thing poked through back to front actually, it's got to go that way. So that the screw on end goes onto the rain marine, that end goes into the bus over there. This goes onto this unit. Now I just had to put a new end on this. I did put an end on it before, but it was too big for where it's got to fit. I changed it. I also had to split this wire and give, give myself some more room to get these on the separated attachments because they didn't only left a tiny little bit of wire hanging up. So because we've got a bare wire in there as well as the earth lead, I put a bit of heat shrink on there. Now I'm going to try and shrink this part without burning my fingers too badly. Getting a bit warm. Whoa, that did get warm. So now, hopefully I can slide this heat shrink over that, but still have enough to cover the whole box and dice. Again, shrink that down onto the wires. It'll be easier to do without burning myself now. That's well insulated anyway, it's not going to cause any dramas at all. A little bit more heat than I'd like in there. But that's just a bit of the silver paper that's wrapped around it as well. And now I should come in under that. I shall take that off and do it again, painful as it will be. Now I better find a label that more or less suits that. Pretty sure I won't have one that says Namiya Bus. Looks like electronics is probably the best bet out of all them. All I need to do is remember that electronics means Namiya. What have we got spare? We've got some screws spare, we've got the cover for the bus spare and we've got a spare spare cable for the Namiya 2000 which I shall probably need and that looks very much like job done before I seal it up I will bring the rain rain in and just try that I'll show you what I'm going to do with this what I'd like to do is to get all of these put in through here actually I should cut it to length first probably that much will be enough. Now I'm just going to try and hinge all this stuff from coming unraveled again without damaging the wires inside it. with a little bit of care. Same as any nylon rope, we're just burning the edges and melting them together. A little bit of sliver on your fingers to stick them. And there we go. We can pull that out now. And like any good Chinese finger puzzle, that will thin down around our leads. And there we go. Our leads nice and neatly together. I can feed whatever I don't want back inside the cover once that's on. Yeah, that looks quite neat. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, the moment of truth. I'll turn our engines to on and have a look at our dashboard and see what we can find out there. Got our fuel, which is about right, about half a tank.
it looks like it's all gonna work and I'm getting a data feed through for all my engine information all right well I got all the uh, engine system set up on the gray main now yeah, thanks for taking the time to watch this video you can do the same thing with a Simrad or a Lorance, Hummingbird, Garmin any of the other MFDs pretty much all of them will allow you to interface your engine to the MFD doesn't have to be a Yamaha either most engines have the same sort of intelligence to run their instruments and I just think it makes more sense to have everything up on a big display I can monitor the engine better with this and let's face it, engines are dear, you don't want to be replacing them if you don't have to, and monitoring them is a key part of looking after them. Anyway, that's it. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.